you know, we were told by GoToWebinar not to do too much video over uh, the, I guess, GoToWebinar platform. It's not technically meant for doing video, but definitely easy to pop up a camera and say hi to everyone just to give you guys the visual. I'm here at home. Now I was going to go into the office, but the kids will be home from uh, various hula practices and whatnot real soon. So as soon as I get done with you guys, I'm going to be going and into the kitchen, cooking dinner, and getting things ready for the kids. So playing that dual role tonight, trainer and dad. So kind of enjoying that. Anyway, let me stop the video presentation. Great to see all of you, by the way. So thank you guys for being here. So I'll be stopping the video presentation now. And what I want to do, actually, is I want to get started right off the bat with a quick question. To me, these webinars are about you. These webinars are for you. It's for you guys and to provide you with content. This morning, I was at a board meeting for my, parent, uh, for my kid's school. And I'm a part of the board, and I was going there talking to some of the parents, and they asked me if I would do a quick presentation on some of the events that have been happening, and also how can the board come together a little bit more. And I looked at them and smiled. I said, how long do I have? And the lady who's in charge of the um, Parents Association, she said, well, I mean, most people only talk for 10 or 15 minutes. And I went, yeah, you know, I, I talk for a living, so... You have to give me a time constraint. You have to give me a time frame. Um, and so, you know, th th these are some questions that I have for you guys. Uh, first one is really simple. I love doing these webinars. I think they're phenomenal. I, I think that they're a great way to provide you all with content. And so here's a quick poll that I have. Would you like us to do another webinar in March? I mean, I I'm seeing if I can do one a month, maybe uh, two a month. But really, I, I'm just curious as to how often you guys would want them. Uh, maybe we should have put up there February and March, because right now it's pretty much 100% saying, yes, do another one in March. Fabulous. Then every opportunity that I have, I'm going to do my best to squeeze one of these in. And what I'm going to do on my personal blog on drmat.com, every once in a while, what we'll do is we'll post up a, a blog post that just basically says, hey, we're looking for some content for upcoming webinars. Here are some things that I would enjoy talking about. What would you guys like to um, hear? And then let you guys guide and shape these webinars. There are things that I will want to talk about sometimes, and then there may be things that you want to talk about. So I want to make this about you guys. This is about you, your learning, and your journey. So I'm going to go ahead and close this poll. About half of you voted. And uh, let's see, I guess the answer is yes. So what I'll do is I'll do another one in March. So we're going to plan on doing one maybe the first week of March when I get back from San Diego. That's fantastic. Thank you, guys. I really do appreciate that. And the next one that I have, and this, this one is really important, how long uh, should these webinars be? What is the right length for you? I think that GoToWebinar allows a limit of about 90 minutes. So that's the max. I mean, more than 90 minutes, I think we're going beyond that. What we target right now is right around 60 minutes. That's where we aim for. My goal is to do a 45-minute presentation, give you guys some solid content, and then leave it open for some questions and answers towards the end. And as long as we're able to do that, I feel like we've done a pretty good job. I see so far as about half of you have voted, the bulk of you are saying about an hour. And so good, we're, so we're right on with that. Thank you guys, by the way, for this feedback. I really do appreciate it. I wanna make sure that we uh, schedule these again, not just at the right time. That's what we asked last time. We asked last time, hey, what would you like us to talk about next? When would be a good time to do it? So the group that was on last talked about this time slot is really good. Middle of the week is really good. And this time around, we said, hey, maybe we're wrong with how long to make it. But let's keep it around 60 minutes this time and see what people have to say. So I'm going to leave it open for about another five more seconds. And then I'm going to go ahead and close it because about two-thirds of you have voted. Fantastic. OK, I'm going to be closing the poll now because about two-thirds of you have voted, just under two-thirds. So that's a good amount. And let me share the results with you. So there's, there, <laughs> there, there's at least one or two of you out there that are like, Matt, just talk forever. 
<laughs> That's the, more than 90 minutes. Matt, talk forever. I'll take my uh, iPhone into the bathroom with me. Keep going. Um, and then a few of you are like, no, nah, keep it short. So here, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do my best to hit the bulk of content right around that 30, 40 minute mark. And if we have an exercise, I'll do it right after that. And then we're going to save the last part for anything that we have to share with you about upcoming events and for Q&A. And that way you guys are able to spend the amount of time that you want on here. And for those of you that want more than 90 minutes, then just, I guess, hit the link and replay it and you'll get a little bit more. <laughs> so anyway, thank you guys for that. That's fantastic. So here is what I want to talk about. Let's get started with our content. So those, I have a couple more polls for you as we go through this. And uh, we'll get to those in a little bit. I want to get started right away with the content because we spend enough time on polling. So here we go. So what are we doing? We're doing the NLP.com webinar series. This one is about the zone. This one is about how to perform at a peak level. And really, this is a topic that I thought would be fantastic to cover. The last webinar that we had, I brought up a variety of different topics that we could talk about. I emphasized what I thought would be the benefit of each of them. And the last group voted that this would be the one for them. So let's start off with really simple. I like to give you guys a brief overview of what we're going to be covering. So first of all, we're going to be covering the zone. So I'm going to define the zone, how to enter into the zone. Then I'm going to take you through an exercise, some practice. And I want to let you know ahead of time, if you are listening to this in some sort of, you know, like if you're driving, if you have the GoToWebinar app on your iPhone or Android and you're driving, please be aware that you can actually do the exercise because going into the zone is an open eye exercise. However, there are some things that I'm going to have you do that probably wouldn't be a good idea if you did all of them when you're driving. So we will provide you with the link so that you are able to then uh, download the webinar or listen to the webinar, stream it, I guess, online. And then you will be able to go back and do that exercise again. It's going to be very simple. So these are the big things of what we're covering right now. It's very, very specific, very focused in on the zone. So let's start off with something really simple. Let's define what the zone is. And I want to start with a story uh, from a student of uh, neuro-linguistic programming. She took our practitioner training. And she consults with the National Hockey League, but she didn't before she became a practitioner. So she consults now with the National Hockey League. She came and took the practitioner training from us. And she learned how to do this process. We talked about it a little bit in there. And we didn't give a lot of sports analogies. But she immediately recognized the benefit of going into this state. And she went back. And she had been working with just one individual at this time, a person who I think was in the minors. He was professional. He was getting paid. And he was looking to move up into the majors to play hockey at a higher level. But the problem that he kept having is that there were times that he would go out onto the ice and he would do so well. He would just, I mean, it was like he, he would refer to it as I was in the flow. I was in the zone. And I was just the puck looks so big and the net looked even wider and you know I've gotten to work with a variety of different athletes and they'll describe it like that I worked with a professional basketball player and he would talk about the fact that when he was in that zone it's like the hoop got bigger it was as if you could just throw the ball up and you knew it was going to go in I worked with a person who was attempting to go from amateur to professional golf uh, and he had like a one or a scratch handicap. And the problem that he kept encountering is that he would get out of his flow. And he believed it had to do with a certain rhythm, with a certain, um, uh, with, with a certain setup, with a certain you know, routine that he would do. Now I admit, a routine will get you into the right state. A routine will get you into the right flow. But this is so easy to do. And the lady that was at our practitioner training, she went back and she was working with this one hockey player. And it doesn't matter to me whether you like hockey or dislike hockey. You know, I'm from Hawaii. We don't have hockey here. So the point is, though, that she began to work with this individual, uh, 
male hockey player, and she taught him how to do this. And the first time he did it, he turned to her and said, do you understand what you just taught me? And she said, what do you mean? He said, how I feel right now. They were standing on the ice, and he looked around. He said, how I feel right now. It was like I'm instantly in that state. He dropped a puck on the ground. He just turned and wham, slammed it right into the net. She said it was the most amazing thing that she had ever seen. And he asked, how do I get back into this every single time? She taught him. He made the professional team. And now she coaches the professional team on how to enter into a state, how to get into that uh, peak performance. Now, you might think this only has to do with sports. I, a lot of the research and some of the things that I'm going to share with you with regard to the research, yes, it does have to do with sports because, well, sports psychology is big money right now. However, what we found with the presenters and the top performers around the planet, these are people that get up in front of groups and talk and present. They would get into that same neurology. Uh, salesmen, saleswomen, when we would interview them, when we were looking at doing the modeling process, to teach other people how to do amazing selling. They would describe a very similar thing. I, they wouldn't talk about the net being bigger. They wouldn't talk about the, the cup on the green being bigger. They would sit there and go, it's like I went into this sales situation and I knew I was going to get the sale. Uh, people who do public speaking, it's like you, you can talk to them and go, oh, I got up on stage and I knew from the moment I was up there that it was a done deal, man. I was going to nail that presentation. And we found this common thread, this common thread that we call the zone. In the last uh, couple things that I want to share with you that to me are the most important. One, there are so many studies on what the zone is, and the zone is specifically related to peripheral vision. How you all of a sudden, when you're in the zone, it's like you have an awareness around you. They took a professional basketball player and ran him down the court. And they had a high-speed camera facing him. And while he was looking straight ahead, they would flash a light either to the right or to the left. And what they found was, what is the last possible moment where they can flash the light and that professional athlete will still be able to see it and make a move either to the right or left towards the light? So let me explain this again. Athlete running down the court, looking straight ahead. If he takes his eyes off straight ahead, no light flashes. So he keeps his eyes focused forward, and they found what is the threshold. So then in high-speed photography, measuring micro-muscle movements, they discovered that when this athlete was in the zone, which is related to peripheral vision, that he was able to make a movement towards the light almost instantaneously. The light would flash, and you would see a flinch in that direction. I watched these in my um, residency at Indiana University for my, for my PhD. It, it was amazing. So that's not the amazing, that, by the way, that's not the amazing part of the study. The amazing part is they took an average Joe. They took an average guy who was not a professional athlete and had him run down the court. And he couldn't see the light flashing to save his life. He's looking straight ahead. He's all focused in on the camera. They took him aside, taught him how to be in peripheral vision, taught him how to get into this state had him run down the court, and when he was in the state and the light would flash, listen carefully now, he would make the same movement at the exact same speed as the professional athlete. Now, in high speed, no, he didn't have the muscles to make the turn. No, it wasn't as elegant. No, it wasn't as fast and rapid, and nor was he explosive. But in high speed photography, when you slow it down and you look at the micro-muscle movement, it was as if he all of a sudden was at that same level where he could make that adjustment at the very least in his mind. So the reason why this is so powerful is because it begins to have you tap into what people do in order to get into that level of peak performance. It teaches you the basis of that. Now I'm going to talk about what it takes then to kick it up a notch. So I, I, two major things I want to share with you. How to get into the zone and where the zone is most appropriate based on what you already know. So, you know, the professional athlete, they have the muscle strength to make the turn. 
the average Joe didn't have the muscle strength. So if I was working with him, yeah, I can teach him the zone, but then I'm going to have him go into the gym. I'm going to have him do exercises that will strengthen his body so that he's able to make those type of movements at a quick, rapid pace. However, knowing the zone is going to give him a leg up on everyone else. And the final big reason why this is so important, uh, I'll talk a little bit more about the benefits of the zone on the next slide. The other reason why this is so important is that when you are freaking out, you're not in the zone. When you are freaking out and experiencing negative emotions, then you are not in the zone. You are in what you would call the opposite of the zone. And you know, I wrote an email blast that I think is going out today or tomorrow. I don't know what it is. and I, I wish you guys were live. I know this is live for you and you guys get to see me and hear me. Well, all I see on my screen right now are my slides. I don't know what question you guys are asking. Chelsea, who helps me out a lot um, in our company, she's probably fielding questions right now and filtering through them for some of the things that I might be able to answer later on. I can't see you guys. I like that interaction. Um, I, I get interaction through emails. I get interaction through my blog. And one of the things that I've noticed over the past few months is that we really seem to be entering a phase of almost uncertainty. I've had so many people email me and say, it feels like I'm just not sure what's going on. Uh, I was just in Austin and a student came up to me and literally said, it feels like there's a dark cloud over everything. And for those of you that know my uh, NLP background or who have attended my NLP training, of course, that's, that's called a universal quantifier. And I looked at him and I said, everything? And he, he literally said, yeah, it feels like everything is just under this dark cloud. And I don't know what it is, that fear, that, that uncertainty that's present. Well, there's a couple things that you can do about it. One of them has to do with being in the zone. Because when you're in this state, you have direct communication with your unconscious mind. And I'll talk about what that means in a moment and how that works. You have direct communication with 90% of who you are. So all of the knowledge that you have. Uh, when we've taught this to kids, and for any of you listening to me that are parents, you need to teach this to your kids. When we've worked with kids, we've seen anywhere between half a grade point and a full grade point jump just teaching them how to do this. Because they're able to tap into the information that's already there at the unconscious. Uh, one of my students, her name is Elizabeth, she works down in San Diego with children who have a variety of different learning or speech uh, problems or issues. And she teaches this to them and says that the results are phenomenal. 90% of who you are is the unconscious mind. It gives you direct communication with your unconscious mind. And so if you know something, if you have knowledge and you're in a situation where you have to share that knowledge, getting into this state allows the knowledge to bubble up to the surface. The next thing is, it's freedom from prolonged negative emotions. No, no, no. You're never going to make your life perfect with something like this. And you're not going to get to a point where by doing this you never experience something negative. What we did find though in, and this was in studies in cognitive psychology and looking at emotions and whatnot, that people who have a better control over their state don't tend to stay in a negative emotion for as long. So in other words, a person that practices something that helps them relax and get into a calm state, they tend to get out of a negative situation faster. So that freak out that you might have when something happens, when you have this, the benefit of the zone, it begins to help you get out of it a lot faster. And for any of you that have been in my trainings where something has either gone wrong or a great deal of flexibility occurring in the training, I've had people say to me, Dr. Matt, how do you remain so calm in this situation? And well, I mean, this is the answer. I, I practice what I teach. I practice this concept that I'm about to share with you guys. The next big benefit is rapid reaction time. I already talked about that, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time. It gives you a faster reaction time because of the connection with your unconscious. And then finally, improved performance. And what I mean by improved performance is that if you already know how to do something, this helps you tap into doing it better. Uh, working with a downhill skier, we worked with a downhill Olympic skier and taught her this process. And it improved her performance because she was able to let go 
and allow that aspect that is in charge of getting the results get the results. I know some of you are sitting there going, hurry up, get to it already, I want to do it. We're almost there. I need to give you a little bit more content. So here you have the three aspects of who you are, the conscious mind, the unconscious mind, and the higher self. And by the way, even though I'm talking and you know, going through this content, you can write a question. If a question comes up, don't hang on to it till the end. Go ahead and post one of your questions. Chelsea's on here with me. She'll be able to take note of the question. I have my uh, iPhone sitting up in front of me so that she can text message me if anything comes up. Uh, because obviously I can't see anything except my slides because you guys are seeing my screen. So if a question comes up that, that you really want to have answered, go ahead and ask it at any time and she'll be able to filter through it and save the questions for me. Sorry for not mentioning that earlier. Okay, so let me get back to the content. Conscious unconscious integration. You have your conscious mind there, you have your unconscious mind, you have your higher self, higher consciousness, the collective energy, whatever you want to call it. When you look at these three bubbles right there, uh, based on current understanding of the mind in psychology, this is not NLP, this is not hypnosis, Huna talking, this is straight up psychology. Your conscious mind is roughly uh, 10. 7% of who you are. Now I've even seen some research that says it's 5% of who we are. And for any of you that have ever heard that we only use 10% of our brain, again, that's not accurate. We use all of our brain. We only use about 10% of our brain consciously. The rest of it is used through unconscious process. The next really big in thing that you need to understand is that our nervous system has 10 to the 10 to the 11th possible neurological connections. That's 10 followed by 10 zeros written 11 times. I don't even think that number at the bottom has enough zeros in it. To get my point though, uh, there was a documentary that was played on, I think it's either the Learning Channel or Discovery. And they talked about the amazing nervous system that we have. And that there are more possible neurological connections in our body than there are stars in the sky and grains of sand on all of the beaches. And I, I've told that to people and they've gone, oh, that's so beautiful. I, I think it's beautiful too. And there's a really important point in that knowledge. And that is that whatever you see that is possible for someone else, it's possible for you. Whatever you see someone else that th they're able to accomplish something, especially if it's dealing with energy, the mind, or emotions. We can have a discussion from now until the end of days about the fact that some people have more physical abilities than others. Yeah, sure, I'm 5'9", I'm not going to be able to dunk a basketball, although there have been basketball players that were shorter than I am who could dunk. I don't have that ability right now. I'm not 7 feet tall. I'm just able to jump up a little bit and slam the ball down. So l let's keep it in the realm of what we're talking about here. Energy, the mind, beliefs, focus, viewpoints, uh, emotions, being able to be calm, centered and balanced, highly motivated. What this tells you right here about our nervous system is that you have the same ability inside that everyone else has outside around you. The only difference is you have not yet developed those neural pathways. You have not yet developed your nervous system to be able to incorporate that. It's one of the big things we teach at our NLP trainings, that you need to take the time to actually develop the connection with your unconscious mind to expand your neurology. And almost everything that we do relates to wanting to expand and improve your neurology. So here's the deal. What we're about to go through will help out with that. Now, I want to cover one more thing and then we're going to get right into how to do this. And that is a really simple process or a really simple thing called your unconscious mind. Your unconscious mind, or if I was talking to a bunch of psychologists, I would say subconscious, is roughly 90 to 95 percent of who you are. When you go into the zone, you tap into what is at the unconscious level. When you go into the zone, you are accessing what the subconscious does. And if you look at everything that your unconscious mind does, and you look at it from a global, a big picture, a chunked up perspective, there are three major things that it does. First of all, your unconscious mind is responsible for all of your learning, all of your behavior, and all of your change. Listen carefully now. All learning, behavior, and change is unconscious. 
So when you practice this technique, it opens you up to your unconscious mind. Now, I can't see you guys, and I don't know how many of you have done trainings and how many of you haven't. I'm sure that there's someone sitting here listening to this and watching the webinar going, come on, not all learning behavior and change. I got a new phone number the other day, and I had to consciously learn it. Wait, wait, that's true. Once you have consciously learned something, it's no longer in the domain or the realm of the unconscious. Uh, sorry, it's no longer in the domain or realm of the conscious mind. It becomes a function of the unconscious. What is your phone number? Go ahead and think it now. So you weren't sitting there while I've been talking for the past 27 minutes going, my phone number is 800-800-MIND, 800-800-MIND. That's our, our phone number, by the way. Um, you weren't sitting there doing that. Once you memorized your phone number, it went into the unconscious. So here's what I'm saying from a cognitive psychology and studies in learning and memory. Once you have learned something, it's no longer in the domain of the conscious mind. It's in the unconscious mind. So where do you have to access this information? Where do you access your memories? Where do you access everything that you have ever learned? Well, you access it by going into the unconscious. Not becoming unconscious, mind you. Not knocking yourself out. God forbid someone sitting there with a frying pan and, okay, now I'll remember everything. No, 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 no. It's doing a technique that opens up or creates a movement between the conscious mind and the unconscious mind. The zone does that. Behavior. Oh, think of riding a bike. Think of driving a car. Oh, my goodness. I have a teenager now. Uh, he's actually going to be 14 this year, so I have to stop saying I have a teenager now. I've had one for a little while. Um, so bizarre that moment as parents when all of a sudden your kid becomes a teenager and you're sitting there looking at them going, oh boy. And on the way home yesterday, he was in the car and he said, you know, Dad, I went online and in approximately two years, I'll be able to get my driver's permit. And, and I'm, I know how quickly two years goes by. And I sat there and just looked at him and I thought, oh my goodness, I'm going to be teaching him how to drive. And I, that's a behavior. Do you guys remember learning how to drive? Do you remember sitting behind the wheel for the very first time? And I remember my dad reaching over to turn on the radio and I'm like, what are you doing? I'm about to drive. Don't, don't put music on. And he laughed, you know, because we both knew NLP at that time. And, and he just laughed and I smiled and I went, I know. I said, but I got to learn it. Now, now, now I know how to drive. Now it's an unconscious behavior. So what am I able to do that? I'm able to talk to my kids, change the radio station. You're not allowed to text message anymore, but I know some of you did at one point. Uh, scan through your iPhone. Turn on Pandora to start streaming some new music because the radio stations are so boring. You're able to multitask. You are able to multitask because the behavior that is your main behavior in the moment, the driving, is now an unconscious behavior. By the way, this is why people have such a hard time changing their behaviors consciously. This is why if you've ever had a friend that you sit there and you go, why do you keep twirling your hair? Why do you keep biting your nails? Why do you do that? And they'll stop and they'll go, oh, I didn't even know I was doing it. Nail biters rarely know they're biting their nails until it hurts because the behavior is so unconscious. So in order to change a behavior, you have to tap into the unconscious. And then finally, change. Listen carefully. If change were a function of the conscious mind, all you would have to do is go, I'm going to change this behavior. I'm going to change this pattern that I'm running. And bang, it would change. But it doesn't work that way. The way it works is by tapping into the unconscious and working with your unconscious to produce change. So what the zone or what is called in ancient times hakalau is, is a process of moving from the foveal into the peripheral. Now, this does a couple of things. I don't have time to go into the entire slide on brainwave patterns. I originally had a whole talk about brainwave patterns and whatnot, and I didn't really think that you guys needed that level of detail. Let's keep it real simple. When you're in foveal, you are uh, farther away from the state that accesses the unconscious mind. When you are in peripheral, you go into a lighter or slowed down brainwave pattern, which allows you to tap into the unconscious. By the way, 
when you look at film footage or get to see people who are performing at peak levels and you look at their eyes, you can tell that they are in peripheral vision. There is a defocus that occurs that allows them to go into peripheral vision. And while remaining in there, they enter into that state, that state called the zone. Now, I have a Hawaiian word up there called hakalau because we actually learned about this process before any of the research had come out. We learned it through our teachings of Huna. Uh, we're going to be running our next Huna workshop in March. I think it's 23 years now, twice a year for 23 years that we've been here in Kona. If you were a live group, I know Karen is on the call. Karen would tell me if it's the 45th or 46th, but it's one of them. Anyway, you guys can forgive me later. Uh, but we've been doing it for a while, and we've been teaching Hakalau. And in fact, the person that I take hula and drumming and chanting from, we're going to be entering a hula festival. And he keeps looking at the girls. And the, the, these ladies who he's teaching how to dance, they have to dance together as a unit. And he keeps saying to them, I can tell that some of you are not seeing the other people around you, that you're not in Hakalau. Hakalau is a state that you can enter into that activates peripheral vision. What does this do? It gets you closer to a relaxed state that accesses the unconscious mind. When you're in this state, it allows the unconscious mind to be free and actually guide the process, guide learning behavior and change. Why is this important? Well, let's take a kid who has been, uh, play, we'll, we'll, keep our, we'll, we'll stick with the hockey. Let's, let's stick with the hockey. You take a person who has been doing hockey since he was five or six, and that he's been playing this sport, and that he's gone through the drills, and his body knows how to do it, and his unconscious mind knows how to do it, your conscious mind cannot tell every single part of your body exactly what to do to hit that shot into the back of the net and in a space that the puck barely fits in. If you look at some of these shots that the professional athletes make, it's like they're squeezing that puck through the tightest little space. And you sit there and go, how do they do it? Well, their bodies do it. Their unconscious mind does it. And when you are in foveal vision, you are not able to access those abilities. You are overthinking it. Stop for a moment. How many of you have overthought a process and totally messed it up? rather than just, quote unquote, going with the flow. Well, going with the flow happens in peripheral. When you stumble, when you mess things up, when you're overthinking things, you're in the foveal. Uh, I later, uh, earlier I said about emotions and looking at people's eyes when they begin to get freaked out or experience emotions, they go into foveal or even tunnel vision where they're not able to see things around them. And what that actually does is it creates a momentum or a buildup of that negative emotion. Uh, amazing to watch some of the studies and the research that they've done where they show they're zoomed in on these people's eyes and they're showing them imagery and the people that are remaining in foveal, they get more and more freaked out. Their heart rate increases, their blood pressure, all of these things get totally out of whack. And then you compare them to the people that are remaining in peripheral vision, that are remaining in that calm state, and it's like, Okay, their heart rate might jump up a little bit, but it comes back down again, and they remain calm. So it's not just a behavior thing, it's a maintaining your state. And then finally, like I said earlier, it's about the information that you have. See, if all of your knowledge is in the unconscious mind, all of your learning, when you tap into this, it opens it up for you. Okay, so that's what the zone is. And, you know, again, I I'm doing my best to keep these webinars to that 60-minute range, if I was doing a one and a half or three hour presentation on it, I would be going through brainwave patterns. I would be going through uh, the various research and whatnot. My guess is that you guys have a big enough, a deep enough understanding of it now to actually begin to practice it. So I'm going to share with you exactly what I teach students in all the trainings that we cover this in. And it's exactly what I've done working with professional athletes, top performers, to teach them how to get into the zone. And then I'm going to have you actually anchor it. I'm going to teach you how to anchor it. Even if you've never done any anchoring, I'm going to teach you how to do a simple process that will help you get back in there.
So first of all, one of the things that you want to do is be in a relaxed state. Uh, maybe if you're in a room right now, what you want to do is see if you can face a direction uh, away from the screen. It's okay. I'll tell you when to turn back. But you, you want to find a direction where you have about an equal amount of distance to your right and to your left. That's your peripheral, the right and the left. And so, for example, if there's a wall to your left, which I'm looking to my left and there's a wall, but it has a window. If the screen was down, I would be a little bit more blocked on that side than on my right side. So you want to see if you can, at best, get an equal amount of distance to your right and left. For those of you that live in wonderful climates like I do, right after this, you guys can go outside and do it. It's so amazing to do it outside, especially when you don't have uh, things hindering your peripheral. If your peripheral can go all the way out to the horizon, it's just so amazing to do this. It's a great meditation. Uh, so here's what I want you to do. See if you can find a direction. Now turn back to the screen. The first thing that you do, and that's our happy learning state or the zone person. We call it the learning state for kids because they love that, so I left it up there. Um, what you do is you have your eyes go up just slightly above eye level. Don't do it yet. I'm explaining how to do it, and then I'm going to guide you through it verbally. So what you want to do is you want to find a spot to look at which is just above eye level. So if you're looking straight across, it's good to have it up maybe about 10, 15 degrees. And if you don't know what 10, 15 degrees is, a couple feet, uh, a yard above eye level. And you're going to want to find a spot to look at. Then what you want to do is as you're staring at that spot, allow your awareness to begin to move out into the peripheral. So at first, focus extremely, I mean all of your attention right on that spot. Now you want to keep your eyes on that spot the whole time. You're not darting your eyes back and forth. You're keeping it right on that spot. And then what you're going to do is you're going to begin to notice what is in the peripheral. So go ahead now, and what I'd like you to do is find that area that you can look at. Find that area that is the most optimal. And again, if you, I, I lived in a studio apartment for a number of years. If you're in a studio apartment or somewhere small, whatever you have is perfect, I promise. Uh, as long as you can put your hands out to either side, you, are, you have enough room. You're going to be able to do this. So here's what I want you to do. Go ahead and lean back in your chair. Or if you're standing, perfectly okay. Take a nice deep breath in. Let's do that together. Exhale. And now go ahead and find a spot to look at that's just slightly above eye level. Go ahead and focus in on that spot. And as you do, allow your awareness to expand out into the peripheral so that you can begin to see what's beneath, above the spot, what's on the right and left. And what I actually want you to do is notice that by just slightly defocusing your eyes, you can take it all the way out into the peripheral so that some of you may even be able to see all the way to the right and left as you're looking straight ahead. Keep your focus on that spot. And now what I'd like you to do is take your hands and put them up on either side and begin to wiggle your fingers ever so gently. Take your hands and wiggle your fingers and move them forward and right at the moment where I'll, while you're staring at the spot, right at the moment where you can begin to see movement in your peripheral, that is the state right there. That is the state. So I have my hands out to either side right now. I'm doing this with you. I got a spot to look at on the wall just above eye level. And I'm wiggling my fingers. And I have them all the way out to the right and left. And I can just barely make out some movement there. So go ahead and do that now. What that does is that begins to get you used to that state. Now, here's the key. What you need to do is go into that state, take it as deep into that state as you can. And when you feel almost a shift in your physiology, a shift in your thinking, a shift in your feeling, just gently take one of your fingers and touch your knuckle with the idea of anchoring this state 
to your knuckle. Either side is fine. Take one of your fingers and just touch your knuckle while remaining in this state. What you're doing is you're neurologically linking. You're making a reminder there on your knuckle of what this state feels like. So go ahead and touch your knuckle when you've gotten yourself into Hakalau, into the zone far enough. Now go ahead, you can wave your fingers again. Make sure you're all the way out there in the peripheral. And when you can see your fingers as far back as you can get them, go ahead and just gently touch your knuckle and anchor that state, that feeling of the zone, Hakalau, to your knuckle. Excellent. Now you can go ahead and take a look at the screen. And notice that while you're looking at the screen, you can remain in Hakalau and see things to the right or left. Now I do want to share with you that it, there is a balance. If you go too far into the peripheral, you might get, I guess, what you could call tranced out a little bit. You might get a little bit zoned out. <laughs> the, there's the zone and then there's zoned out. So we don't want to zone out. We want to be in the zone. And what I found in working with people across the board, it doesn't matter what area this is in, that the zone is where you're able to almost pay an equal amount of attention to what's in front of you and to what's on either side. That there's a balance between the two. What's to my right and left is not going to be as clearly focused as what's in front. What you will have, though, is an equal awareness of what's in front and what's on the sides. What you want to do is practice this. So let me give you a few tips, and I'm going to begin to wrap this up. I'm going to summarize this, give you a few tips to wrap up, um, and then we'll move in to see if there's any questions. Chelsea will probably text message me in a moment to let me know if we have any questions pending right now. So, so here's a couple of tips. First of all, you want to practice Hakalau, the zone, through meditation and relaxation. Uh, even with your eyes closed in meditation, you can go into this state so that you're able to see things all around you. The best time to practice this is in a relaxed state. So you don't want to, for example, hypothetical, go into work, someone pisses you off, and you go, oh yeah, I should practice Hakalau now. No, that's not the time to practice it. You want to have your practice and your anchor already done. It's like basketball players, they don't go and practice on the court in the middle of the game. They practice ahead of time. So you need to practice this ahead of time if you want to get good at it. Practice it in another specific area then. So don't just practice it like going outside or what we did here. Take the state and do it at work. Uh, I, I do presentations all the time. And for those of you that are going to be in my upcoming presentations, you go ahead and watch me. When I'm in the flow, when things are moving, you take a look at my eyes, I guarantee you I'm in Hakalau. When that information is just flowing out, you know you're in that state. And so practice it in another specific area. Uh, talking to your kids, go into Hakalau. You're about to go do a presentation for the board of directors, go into Hakalau. Uh, you're about to go do that sale, go into Hakalau. In other words, practice it in another state so that you can begin to get used to it. And then notice the results and use your new resources. Begin to notice what this does for you. Now, I need to tell you, if you don't already know something, going into Hakalau is not going to give you the knowledge. <laughs> Someone actually said to me in a training, so if I practice this, I'll just know everything because everything's in the collective. I understand Jungian's collective, I promise. My next book should be coming out in about a month. I'm really excited. I just finished the editing of it. Uh, it's a follow-up to my previous book, uh, my second book, which was called um, Find, uh, Find Your Purpose, Master Your Path. And it's a follow-up to that that builds on it. And... So I, it, it has to do with Jungian. It has to do with Huna and energy and whatnot. And this person that came up to me and said, so if I practice Hakalau, I'll tap into the unconscious. I get the unconscious. I get the collective. I believe in that, and I know that all that information is there. And it's really going to be helpful if you already know it. So things that you're already good at, things that you are good at, if you're already a good presenter, Going into Hakalau then is going to allow you to be in control of getting into that zone and hitting the sweet spot. If you play a recreational sport or even a professional sport, if you golf, oh my goodness, practice this. Tennis, practice it. Anything that you do, practice this and notice your results and build that anchor up, that touching of your knuckle. For those of you that know anchoring, of course you can do it in different places. You can touch your ear, whatnot. 
Um, I like the knuckle. The knuckle, for those of you that have not done the practitioner training, that's just a way for you to remember and get into that state. Uh, it's using a little bit of uh, behavioral psychology and whatnot. Uh, NLP calls it anchoring. And what you want to do is build up positive resources on that anchor. So going into the state and having a positive experience. And when you've done that, then when you touch your knuckle in a, in a moment where you don't feel resourceful, it will bring all those resources back to you. So hypothetical situation. You're good at sales. You're good at talking with your friends. You practice hakalau in that area. You come home and the kids say something and you begin to freak out. Well, fabulous. Touch your knuckle and just notice that you can begin to get more in control of your state. And I, I cannot overemphasize how powerful this is. I've had some people in trainings overlook it and go, that seems too simplistic. And then I've had other people that are now consulting and coaching with professional teams professional hockey teams, uh, top performers, and teaching them how to do this. And it is the basis of a lot of what we teach at the upper levels of HUNA and NLP. We build on this because it is such a fundamental state. And again, the people that are out there getting results, they tend to be in this state while they're getting results. So notice your results and notice how they begin to improve the more you're able to practice this. Okay. So that's it. What time is it now? Wow, it's 5.48. So I was aiming for 45 minutes. So I was pretty close. Something I forgot to put up last time, or maybe I did put it up and I'm just having a total lapse on it. Um, these are some places and some ways that you can keep in contact with us. I'm going to take questions in just a moment. I also want to give you guys a gift that has to do with what I just shared. So hang on just a second. Um, I always like to make sure that we give back. And even though you guys are on our mailing list, if you weren't, you wouldn't be here because this is for you guys. This is the Empowerment Partnership webinar, so we don't do a lot of advertising on it. I want to make sure you guys have resources to practice what you learn. My blog, for those of you that don't know, is drmatt.com. If you're on the mailing list for our company, nlp.com, if you're on that mailing list, that doesn't necessarily mean you're going to get my blog posts. They are two separate databases. They're two separate lists. And at drmatt.com, we don't send out any advertising. We don't send out any um, upcoming trainings. They're all blogs. They're articles. They're research. They're links to other research. Sometimes I have a guest blog come in. A guest blogger is that what you would say? Yeah, guest blogger come in. Um, and in addition to that, that's where in the future I will be asking some of the questions. Like, hey, we have an upcoming webinar. Here are three topics. You guys, let me know which one. So if you go to drmatt.com, it's a great place for resources on NLP, HUNA, uh, psychology, hypnosis. And go ahead and subscribe. And that way, anytime something is posted, which is about once or twice a week, you'll get a notification that you can go ahead and check it out. And that's the email address. That's our um, email address if you want to keep in contact. And we're also on Facebook. I do that whole Facebook thing. In fact, when I'm done here, I will Facebook what I'm grilling tonight for the kids. That's probably one of the most deep philosophical things that I'll put up there tonight. <laughs> I'm going to do some grilling. The kids have been begging me to uh, cook out on the grill, so I'll do that. You guys can hook up with us there, facebook.com, Empowerment Partnership, um, or facebook.com slash Dr. Matt James. And that way you'll be able to be in contact with us. I do believe all of our blog posts are popped up on Facebook. So either way, whichever medium you like to be able to keep in contact with us is perfect. So let, let me tell you what we got for you. I love to give back. Uh, so there's a couple of things. First of all, what we're going to offer to you uh, this time is a free downloadable MP3. Thank you. I mean, I'm so appreciative of you guys being here. I always want to make sure I give back. And you know, if you already have this, great. If you don't, download it for MP3. Uh, it, it's a great way to practice what we learned here today with Hakalau. It's a closed eye meditation, and I talk about seeing the light in your mind in all directions. What this will allow you to do is to connect with it and to um, absolutely tap into those resources and increase your own success. We're also doing another product offer. For those of you who didn't take advantage of it last time or that you guys weren't on the webinar last time, we have a fabulous product called Huna Prosperity and Wealth. It was an amazing training that I did in Toronto. In, in this day and age with everything going on with fear and uncertainty, to really learn about how to understand the energetic relationship between you and money and how to clear out some of that baggage and how to let go of some of those negative emotions. 
Uh, it's usually a couple hundred dollars, and we're offering it for 97 And on top of that, we're going to throw in a couple of tickets to our upcoming neuro-linguistic programming events, which are normally $97. So by getting the product, you get two free tickets. It's like you're getting, I don't know, it's, it's like two for Tuesday, even though it's Thursday. I mean, you guys are getting a lot out of this. And I wanted to share one last thing, and then Chelsea, can you just text message me quickly to see if there's any questions so I can get to them right away. I, you guys are going to be getting an email from us at NLP.com. And with all of this fear and uncertainty, if you can make it to one of these trainings, we are in the next series of events in San Jose and San Diego. And if it works out really well, we'll add it to our Seattle event in May and even our Los Angeles event in May. And the tickets, by the way, are good for the Los Angeles event in May as well. We're going to add in the mental and emotional release therapy. Right now, I'm only telling you we're going to do it in San Jose and San Diego. I want to see how it goes. The release technique that we have researched, validated, uh, clinical research has been done on it. At a clinic in Nevada on clinical depression, depression gone in five sessions. I felt compelled this morning when I woke up. I, I turned to my wife, and for those of you that know, I work with my wife, and I said, I know it's an NLP training. I know we usually only teach this at the master practitioner level, but I would like to teach a practitioner version of the mental and emotional release therapy because I think these people really need a tool to let go of their fear. I mean, we've been doing these NLP trainings now going on two years, and the number one question that I get is, how do I let go of some more of that baggage? So guess what? We're doing it in San Jose and San Diego. So if you've never been to one of our events and you live in California, then go. Uh, if you've been to one of the events and we didn't do it before, obviously, this is the first time, then come back and, and take it again. And if you know someone that could benefit from this, please bring them because we're going to do our best to go through as much techniques as we can to help you release the stuff. Because I do believe when you have let go of the negative emotions and you don't have that fear, it's so much easier to find certainty in your life. And the tickets that we're going to be giving away for you guys this time, they're going to be good for San Jose, San Diego, Seattle, and Los Angeles. And, you know, if you don't live there and you buy the product, give the tickets away to someone else. I mean, that's a great way to pay it forward. That's a great way to give back. And I really do hope you guys take that opportunity. And I look forward to seeing you. Oh, i got to give you the link. Hello. By the way, it's Chelsea. You're text messaging me and going, give them the link. So the link is nlp.com slash the zone gift. Uh, you will get an email right after this, and the email is going to allow you to just click, I guess, the link and take you right to it. But for those of you that really want it and make sure that you got it, just remember the zone gift, put it all together, nlp.com slash the zone gift. And if you're listening to this as a recording, I do believe the link will still be up there. If it's not, then email our office at drmatt at nlp.com, and we'll do our best to get the information to you. Um, so I, I only have a couple minutes left. I'm going to check to see if there's any questions. I'm going to take this screen down. I hope that's OK. Make sure that you guys wrote it down, nlp.com, the zone gift, so you guys can see my uh, website in my desktop there. But anyway. One other thing, I, this is a, a brainstorm that I've had. This is an idea that I've had, and there's quite a few of you on here. I just want to go over a couple of quick polls with you about offerings. There's this idea that I've had for a while that I thought would be really neat. You guys let me know what you think about it. Um, imagine if we did a 30-day boot camp, like a manifestation makeover. Go through cleaning out the baggage, negative emotions, teach you goal setting. You're going to have videos to watch, audios to listen to. You're going to have uh, webinars to do like this. Keep it to a small group of people. Keep it exclusive. Some people I, I will even you know, work with, I think, one-on-one -on -one if we can keep it at a, a decent level. I'm just curious, how many of you would be interested in that? I, I know I don't have a price. I know I don't have any of that other information. How many of you would be interested in something like that? A 30-day like boot camp makeover. We start on a certain, uh, it, it's not a meet at every week at a certain time. It's kind of a go at your own pace. And over 30 days, letting go of negative emotions, limiting decisions, teach you goal setting. Uh, very similar to what we used to do in an old weekend, but just upping it a notch, just totally empowering your life. OK, well, half of you have voted, and no one's saying no. OK. So this is, a, well, one person said no. That's fine. Fabulous. 
I, I, I do appreciate that, by the way. I can't see who did. So I, I do appreciate that. I, I love the honesty. Uh, so here's the deal. This is something that we have in the works. And uh, if we decide to launch this, I will definitely make sure that I get that information out to you right away. I'm going to go ahead and close the poll. I kept it open for a minute. About two-thirds of you have voted. So 98%. Fabulous. Chelsea, make a note of that because I, I think that that would be a great thing that we can begin to uh, get out there. Now, you guys didn't ask any questions at the end of this webinar. The next poll was kind of funny. Do you like that there's an opportunity to ask me questions at the end of these webinars? If you vote yes, I'm going to ask you, why did you ask any questions then? <laughs> Are there any questions, Chelsea? Let me find. Someone raised their hand, though. I see a little hand up. Who's raising their hand? Sylvie, you raised your hand. Just go ahead and click on the questions and ask the questions. That's really cute. About half of you have voted. 96 are saying that they do like the questions. Well, I, we still don't have any questions. I'm, I'm glad that I leave the opportunity up there for you to ask questions, so we'll keep doing that then. I won't fill the whole thing up with content. I'll make sure that I always leave time for questions. And, uh, oh, here's a couple questions. Okay, what age uh, can you attend your class? The youngest I've had in a practitioner training is 11. And you know what? I did my practitioner training when I was 13. And I did Anthony Robbins Firewalk when I was 11. For those of you that have been to my trainings, you've heard me tell the stories. And I don't believe that age is a cutoff. I believe that maturity is the cutoff. And our practitioner training runs from 9 a.m. to 8 p.m. And Santiago, whose father attended our practitioner training in Florida, ended up taking our uh, practitioner training and then took our master practitioner training. This 11-year-old sat through a 15-day training that had one day off, did the board break, uh, came up to me at the end of the training and said, next year I'm going to be at trainer's training, Dr. Matt, he said. And he said, I'm going to go out there and start teaching kids. I mean, I was just, I got teary-eyed about it. And so I love having kids there. And it's more of a maturity level thing. And what I usually do is I like to meet with the parent. And because our practitioners are now only $97, because our practitioner event is only $97, it's a no-brainer. You can bring your kid, and if they don't like, uh, it's, it's 97 bucks. It's not like before where it was three grand, and you're worried about the fact that your kid may freak out and not like it. So I mean, it's pretty easy. Do you have any training on quantum physics? Joseph, absolutely. I am a big fan of quantum physics at the master practitioner level. We go over quantum linguistics and quantum physics at HUNA. Uh, at level two, we introduce concepts of quantum physics, and I go over it at an even deeper level, uh, at an upper level HUNA training. I do not have any specific trainings or standalone trainings that deal with quantum physics, nor have we put any product out yet. Uh, but it is absolutely something that would to me, be an exciting thing to talk about. So Joseph, you brought that up. Chelsea, if we can just remember the quantum physics question, heck, maybe I can do a one-hour webinar on quantum physics and how it applies. Uh, Joseph, I bet you would sign up for that one So because it's free. So that kind of makes it an easy decision. But anyway, last thing is, would the 30-day manifestation be online? Brian, absolutely. It would not be a face-to-face -face training. It would be online through webinars like this. We'd use GoToMeeting. You'd have audios to listen to that you would stream. You'd have videos. You'd have exercises to do. And then there would be times where I'd be able to meet with you and take your questions one-on-one. -on -one. So it would be almost a hybrid of uh, seminar training, self-study, webinar, and a little bit of coaching thrown in there. Because I really want to see if that would be uh, something that would help benefit people. Let me just jam through these questions real fast. Fast. Uh, how do you know if you're in the zone? I practice Aikido. Oh, fabulous. I did Aikido too. Uh, Indika, is that how you, I hope that's how you pronounce your name. Please forgive me if, if that's wrong. Um, you're, you're trained to be in our center always. Yeah, it, it is very similar. I, I took Aikido, and I took it from a guy who uh, had come over from Japan and learned it from the person, I guess, who created Aikido. And I did that for a number of years as a kid. Please forgive me. I don't remember his name. I was really young. And he would talk about having soft eyes. That's a, that, that's a term that they use in uh, feng shui and in martial arts. They talk about having soft eyes and finding your center. So finding your center, your na'au, and having soft eyes. The way you know you're in it is because it feels. So everyone, listen carefully. This is a great question now. The way you know you're in the zone is because it feels like what you're doing has become effortless or natural. 
So if it's something you've done over and over again, like presenting, I, like I'm talking to you right now, I feel like it's natural, it's in the flow, I'm not overthinking things, I saw your question, I'm just going forward and answering it. And quite often when I get into this state and I'm in a training, someone will raise their hand and they'll go, oh my goodness, what you just said was brilliant, what did you say? And I know I'm in the zone <laughs> because I can't remember what I said because I'm not conscious of it. It's just like it's flowing, it's moving. So that's how you know you're in the zone. Uh, you voted for doing the mental release when you get to Seattle. <laughs> Look at this, I vote for doing it. <laughs> Dave, I love it, buddy. If the people in San Jose and San Diego respond to it and think it's fantastic, bang, I'll do it in Seattle. I love Seattle, I haven't been there for a while. So uh, yeah, Chelsea, Ch Chelsea's here, she'll remind me, send me an email. So Chelsea's in Seattle, so she'll, she'll be there at the training and she'll walk in and she'll say, you better do this because otherwise Dave will remind you. Do you have anything specifically designed to help sports teams? No, I don't, and sorry, Jennifer, I, I, I would love to. I used to coach volleyball, and I so enjoyed working with the uh, 12, 13, 14-year-old kids when I coached volleyball. I taught them this, by the way, and we were a small school who had always finished last, and we finished third uh, two years after I had started coaching. Taught them NLP, anchoring, positive visualization, goal setting, and this, and wow. I mean, some of these kids made all state, and they had never done that before. I can't claim that's all me. I, it's all them. I, I absolutely believe it's the kids. They not only loved it, they incorporated it. And listen, Jennifer, here's the deal. You gotta, if, if this is what you love and you want to add this into what you're doing, then really the NLP training, I mean, I, I don't mean to harp on it. You, you learn these techniques there, and it's not specifically geared towards sports, but you can take the techniques and put them right into sports. And in fact, when I was in Austin, I had three people that worked with athletes, coaching them one-on-one. -on -one, and they came up to me and said, some of the things that they learned are totally valuable. And then I even coached them on how to reframe people because they were like, people might think this is weird. And I'll, uh, Jennifer, I'll, I'll tell you my reframe right now. The most winningest coach in basketball, uh, recent basketball history, Phil Jackson, was reported on a number of occasions to be completely bizarre, weird, visualizations, meditation, um, I mean just off the wall stuff and look how many championships he won. And so definitely weird is in and that's why you guys are here on this webinar because I absolutely like weird and weird is in. So we are in rapport. Uh, Mariana, I'm kind of multitasking here and would love to have a uh, quieter moment to pay my full attention to the webinar. <laughs> well you'll get the link, you will get the link and um, uh, then you'll be able to stream it anytime. And I think another thing from you, Mariana, was do you, uh, oh, just thank you, good, good to see you. Thank you very much. I'm actually reading your question, hi. And yes, I know, Mariana, I know who you are. So very nice that you're on here, I appreciate that, thank you. Uh, and that's when you, co you coach volleyball. Fabulous, Jennifer, I love volleyball. Had a great time. You know, I'm only 5'9", and so I'm not really uh, the tallest person, but I learned through NLP and just practicing everything I know, I got good enough at setting that I actually played club volleyball for a while and then was invited to coach. And, and I coached back row passing and setting and how to run the offense. And it was just a fantastic experience. Wouldn't trade things. Loved it. Okay. What day will you be doing the new release work in San Diego? I, you know... Uh, Joanne, I would love to say it's going to be on a specific day. My trainings are very fluid. My trainings are very fluid, and I need to take a look at um, when that would best fit in. And to me, it would be either closer to the beginning or the end. Uh, and what you want to do is contact our office. Oh, let me close the poll. Share the results. Yeah, 93% of you say you like questions, and you've gotten to ask a bunch of them. So obviously, you were just waiting till the end. So Joanne, you know, I don't know specifically when we would do it. I'm, I'm very flexible with my schedule, and I always take feedback from students. And so what you might want to do is see if there is uh, a, a way where you can contact the office and, and find out. Okay, last question, and I'm going to wrap it up. David, Matt, any, ch any chance you can do some chunk down webinars on NLP topics, strategies, meta programs? You know what, David? That's actually where I want to get to with these. What I would like to get to is a point where we're doing some chunk down webinars on NLP topics and begin with some basic ones, go through strategies, go through meta programs, and some of the webinars will be for people that have done NLP trainings. That way I can jump right into it. And then some of them will be beginning webinars. And the really cool thing is that you're here 
uh, participating, and this is only our second one. I, it's not my second webinar. I've been invited to do dozens of these things. But we just woke up and said, hey, I mean, based on how much it costs to get this, this room here with GoToWebinar and have it maxed out so we can put a lot of people in it, why not do it? And so that is actually our goal, David. We're actually moving in that direction to be able to have more specific teachings, archive them, get them up on NLP.com. And uh, here's my commitment. I'm going to do it as fast as I can. And quality is very important to me. And so, you know, I'll put up on my blog what do you guys want the next topic to be about. And if there's time in March or even later on in February, maybe I'll run another one uh, specific to NLP. But I'm going to leave it up to you guys. I'm going to put a list of topics that I'd like to talk about. So hook up with us at drmat.com if you haven't done so already. And we'll post something there real soon and put up some topics for the upcoming webinars and get rolling with these because I love them. I, I love the interaction and I love keeping in contact with you guys. Okay. Uh, networking in Orange County. Jennifer, contact our office and we'll see if we can get you some networking in Orange County. I know there's a few people there. And so go ahead and do that. In fact, we have a lot of graduates in Orange County. So contact our office. I, I got one last one, and this is kind of more of a joke, but you have to forgive me. I have a crazy sense of humor. How many of you love polls? I, I'm doing a poll about polls. <laughs> Are you guys okay with us doing polls? Are you guys okay with us asking questions? I know they're kind of like right in the middle of the webinar, and I've had some people say, why do you ask so many questions? Well, I like to get feedback from you guys. So I'm going to leave this up for about another 40 seconds, and then we're wrapping up this uh, webinar. About a third of you have voted. So far, everyone's saying, yeah, you guys are good with the polls. We'll keep them relevant, by the way. We won't do any crazy polls. Or I might get actually bored one day and do a crazy poll. But then you guys will begin to understand my sense of humor a little bit more if I do that. OK. So you know, I, I took as many questions as I could. We ran a little bit over. Thank you guys so much for hanging out and sticking around. Uh, about 40% of you voted. So I'm just going to close and share the results. 100% yes, we'll keep doing polls. You guys love them. Uh, we love them. So thank you very much. Uh, thank you guys for being here. Remember again, the link is nlp.com slash the zone gift. If you know anyone that would benefit from this webinar when you get the link, I, I'm totally okay for you guys to share it, pass the word around. And for any of you that are in the San Jose, San Diego region, if you know someone that would benefit from this information, you or a friend, please remember that we do have referral fees. We do have give back. And so if you're bringing someone with you, you get a referral on that. You get a referral fee. And if they enroll in a future training, you get a percentage of that. We'd love to give back and to really support you guys in supporting us and helping us do what we love to do. And, and that is really empower the planet, what it says there at the bottom of the slides. So thank you all for being a part of this. Thank you for joining me in the uh, NLP, the Zone webinar. We'll be doing another one at the latest a month from now, probably first week of March. And if we can squeeze one in a little bit earlier, I'd love to do one. So thank you all very much. Take care. Aloha.